This is Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Act Five, Scene One, Mantua, a street. Enter Romeo. Romeo. If I may trust the flattering eye of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think, and breathe such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Ah, me, how sweet is love itself possessed, when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. Enter Balthazar. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fares my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Balthazar. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. Romeo, is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging. Get me ink and paper and hire post horses. I will hence to-night. Balthazar. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. Romeo, tush, thou art deceived. Leave me, and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? Balthazar, no, my good lord. Romeo, no matter. Get thee gone, and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Exit Balthazar. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee to-night. Let's see for means. O oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts he dwells, which late I noted in tattered weeds with overwhelming brows, calling of simples, meager were his looks, sharp misery had worn him to the bones, and in his needy shop a tortoise hung, an alligator stuffed, and other skins of ill-shaped fishes, and about his shelves a beggarly account of empty boxes, green earthen pots, bladders, and musty seeds, remnants of pack-thread and old cakes of roses, were thinly scattered to make up a show. Noting this penury to myself, I said, and if a man did need a poison now, whose sale is present death in Mantua, here lives a caitiff wretch, would sell it him. Oh, this same thought did but forrun my need, and this same needy man must sell it me. As I remember, this should be the house. Being holiday, the beggar's shop is shut. What? Ho! Apothecary! Enter Apothecary. Apothecary. Who calls so loud? Romeo. Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Hold, there is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life-weary taker might fall dead and that the trunk may be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powder furred doth hurry from the fatal cannon's womb. Apothecary, such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Romeo, art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fierce to die? Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thine eyes, contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back, the world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, but break it, and take this. Apothecary, my poverty, but not my will, consents. Romeo, I pay thy poverty, and not thy will. Apothecary, put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off, and if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. Romeo, there is thy gold, worse poison to men's souls, doing more murders in this loathsome world than these poor compounds that thou mayest not sell. I sell thee poison, thou hast sold me none. Farewell, buy food and get thyself in flesh. 
become cordial and not poison, go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. Exit. End of scene one. Scene two. Friar Lawrence's cell. Enter Friar John. Friar John. Holy Franciscan Friar! Brother, ho! Enter Friar Lawrence. Friar Lawrence. This same should be the voice of Friar John. Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? Or if his mind be writ, give me his letter. Friar John. Going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order, to associate me here in this city visiting the sick, and finding him, the searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors, and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Friar Lawrence, who bear my letter then to Romeo? Friar John, I could not send it, here it is again nor get a messenger to bring it thee, so fearful were they of infection. Friar Lawrence, Oh, unhappy fortune! By my brotherhood the letter was not nice, but full of charge of dear import, and in neglecting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence, get me an iron crow, and bring it straight unto my cell. Friar John, Brother, I'll go and bring it thee. Exit. Friar Lawrence, Now must I to the monument alone. Within this three hours will fair Juliet wake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo hath no notice of these accidents, but I will write again to Mantua, and keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corse, closed in a dead man's tomb. Exit. End of scene two. Scene three. A churchyard. In it a monument belonging to the Capulets. Enter Paris and his page bearing flowers and a torch. Paris, give me thy torch, boy, hence and stand aloof. Yet put it out, for I would not be seen. Under yon yew tree lay thee all along, holding thine ear close to the hollow ground, so shall no foot upon the churchyard tread, being loose, unfirm with digging up of graves, but thou shalt hear it. Whistle then to me, a signal that thou hearest something approach. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee. Go. Page, aside. I am almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard. Yet I will adventure. Retires. Paris, sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe, thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will do. Or, wanting that, with tears distilled by moans, the obsequies that I for thee will keep Nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. The page whistles. The boy gives warning something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight To cross my obsequies and true love's right? What? With a torch? Muffle me night a while. Retires. Enter Romeo and Balthazar with a torch, mattock, etc. Romeo. Give me that mattock and the wrenching iron. Hold, take this letter. Early in the morning see thou deliver it to my lord and father. Give me the light. Upon thy life I charge thee, whate'er thou hearest or seest, stand all aloof and do not interrupt me in my course. Why I descend into this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring that I must use in dear employment. Therefore hence be gone. But if thou, jealous, dost return to pry in what I further shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. The time and my intents are savage wild, more fierce and more inexorable far than empty tigers or the roaring sea. Balthazar, I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. Romeo, so shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that, live, and be prosperous, and farewell, good fellow. Balthazar, for all this same, I'll hide me hereabout. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Retires. Romeo, thou detestable maw, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth, thus I enforce thy rotten jaws to open, breaking open the door of the monument. And in despite, I'll cram thee with more food. Paris, 
this is that banished haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died, and here is come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. Advances. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. Romeo. I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave me. Think upon these gone, let them affright thee. I beseech thee, youth, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone! By heaven I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone! Live, and hereafter say, a madman's mercy bid thee run away. Paris, I do defy thy conjurations, and apprehend thee for a felon here. Romeo, wilt thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. They fight. Page, O oh Lord, they fight. I will go call the watch. Exit. Paris, O, oh, I am slain. Falls, if thou be merciful, open the tomb, lay me with Juliet. He dies. Romeo, in faith I will. Let me peruse this face. Mercutio's kinsman, noble county Paris. What said my man when my betossed soul did not attend him as we rode? I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. Said he not so? Or did I dream it so? Or am I mad hearing him talk of Juliet to think it was so? Oh, give me thy hand, one writ with me in sour misfortune's book. I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. A grave? Oh, no, a lanthorn, a slaughtered youth, for here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. Death lie thou there, by a dead man interred, laying Paris in the monument. How oft, when men are at the point of death, have they been merry? which their keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife, death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt, liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? Oh, what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous and that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest, and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh. Eyes, look your last. Arms, take your last embrace, and lips, O oh, you, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct, come, unsavory guide, thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to my love. He drinks. O oh, true apothecary, thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss, I die. He dies. Enter at the other end of the churchyard, Friar Lawrence with a lantern, crow, and spade. Friar, St. Francis be my speed. How oft tonight have my old feet stumbled at graves? Who's there? Who is it that consorts so late the dead? Balthazar, here's one, a friend, and one that knows you well. Friar, Bliss be upon you. Tell me, good my friend, what torch is yond that vainly lends his light to grubs and eyeless skulls? As I discern, it burneth in the capel's monument. 
Balthazar, it doth so wholly, sir. There's my master, one that you love. Friar, who is it? Balthazar, Romeo. Friar, how long hath he been there? Balthazar, full half an hour. Friar, go with me to the vault. Balthazar, I dare not, sir. My master knows not, but I am gone hence, and fearfully did menace me with death if I did stay to look on his intents. Friar, stay then, I'll go alone. Fear comes upon me. Oh, much I fear some ill, unlucky thing. Balthazar, as I did sleep under this yew tree here, I dreamt my master and another fought, and that my master slew him. Friar, Romeo, advances. Alack, alack, what blood is this which stains the stony entrance of this sepulchre? What means these masterless and gory swords to lie discolored by this place of peace? Enters the monument. Romeo! O pale! Who else? What? Paris, too, and steeped in blood. Ah, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. The lady stirs. Juliet wakes and stirs. Juliet, O oh, comfortable friar, where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am. Where is my Romeo? Noise within. Friar, I hear some noise. Lady, come from that nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead, and Paris too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. Come, go, good Juliet. Noises within. I dare no longer stay. Juliet, go, get thee hence, for I will not away. Exit Friar Lawrence. What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand. Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. O oh, churl, drink all and left no friendly drop to help me after. I will kiss thy lips. Haply some poison yet doth hang on them to make me die with a restorative. Kisses him. Thy lips are warm. First watch within. Lead, boy, which way? Juliet, yea, noise? Then I'll be brief. O oh, happy dagger, snatching Romeo's dagger. This is thy sheath. Stabs herself. There rest, and let me die. Falls on Romeo's body, and dies. Enter watch with the page of Paris. Page, this is the place there where the torch doth burn. First watch. The ground is bloody. Search about the churchyard. Go, some of you, whoever you find, attach. Exit some of the watch. Pitiful sight. Here lies the county slain. And Juliet bleeding, warm and newly dead, who here hath lain this two days buried. Go tell the prince. Run to the Capulets. Raise up the Montagues. Some others search. Exit others of the watch. We see the ground whereon these woes do lie, but the true ground of all these piteous woes we cannot without circumstance descry. Re-enter some of the watch with Balthazar. Second watch. Here's Romeo's man. We found him in the churchyard. First watch. Hold him in safety till the prince come hither. Re-enter others of the watch with Friar Lawrence. Third watch. Here is a friar that trembles, sighs, and weeps. We took this mattock and this spade from him as he was coming from this churchyard side. First watch, a great suspicion. Stay the friar too. Enter the prince and attendants. Prince, what misadventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning's rest? Enter Capulet, Lady Capulet, and others. Capulet, what should it be that they so shriek abroad? Lady Capulet, the people in the street cry Romeo, some Juliet and some Paris, and all run with open outcry toward our monument. Prince, what fear is this which startles in our ears? First watch, Sovereign, here lies the county Paris slain, and Romeo dead. 
and Juliet, dead before, warm and new killed. Prince, search, seek, and know how this foul murder comes. First watch, here is a friar and slaughtered Romeo's man, with instruments upon them fit to open these dead men's tombs. Capulet, O oh, heaven, O oh, wife, look how our daughter bleeds! This dagger hath mistaken. For, lo, his house is empty on the back of Montague, and it missheathed in my daughter's bosom. Lady Capulet, O oh me, this sight of death is as a bell that warns my old age to a sepulchre. Enter Montague and others. Prince, come, Montague, for thou art early up, to see thy son and heir more early down. Montague, alas, my liege, my wife is dead to-night, Grief of my son's exile hath stopped her breath. What further woe conspires against mine age? Prince, look, and thou shalt see. Montague, O oh, thou untaught, what manners is in this, to press before thy father to a grave? Prince, seal up the mouth of outrage for a while, till we can clear these ambiguities, and know their spring, their head, their true descent. And then will I be general of your woes, and lead you even to death. Meantime forbear, and let mischance be slave to patience. Bring forth the parties of suspicion. Friar, I am the greatest, able to do least, yet most suspected, as the time and place doth make against me of this direful murder. And here I stand, both to impeach and purge myself condemned, and myself excused. Prince, then say at once what thou dost know in this. Friar, I will be brief, for my short date of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, their dead, was husband to that Juliet, and she, their dead, that Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new-made bridegroom from this city for whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. You, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed, and would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then comes she to me, and with wild looks bid me devise some means to rid her from this second marriage, or in my cell there she would kill herself. Then gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. Meantime I writ to Romeo that he should hither come as this dire night to help to take her from her borrowed grave, being the time the potion's force should cease. But he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then all alone at the prefixed hour of her waking came I to take her from her kindred's vault, meaning to keep her closely at my cell till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her awaking, here untimely lay the noble Paris, and true Romeo, dead. She wakes, and I entreated her come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience. But then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she, too desperate, would not go with me, but as it seems did violence on herself. All this I know, and to the marriage her nurse is privy. And if aught in this miscarried by my fault, let my old life be sacrificed, some hour before his time, unto the rigor of severest law. Prince, we still have known thee for a holy man. Where's Romeo's man? What can he say in this? Balthazar, I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Mantua to this same place, to this same monument. This letter he early bid me give his father, and threatened me with death, going in the vault, if I departed not, and left him there. Prince, give me the letter, I will look on it. Where is the county's page that raised the watch? Sirrah, what made your master in this place? Boy, he came with flowers to strew his lady's grave, and bid me stand aloof, and so I did. Anon comes one with light to ope the tomb, and by and by my master drew on him, and then I ran away to call the watch. Prince, this letter doth make good the friar's words, their course of love, the tidings of her death, 
and here he writes that he did buy a poison of a poor apothecary, and therewithal came to this vault to die, and lie with Juliet. Where be these enemies? Capulet! Montague! See what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love? And I, for winking at your discords, too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Capulet, O oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no more can I demand. Montague, but I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold, that while Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. Capulet, as rich shall Romeo's by his ladies lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. Prince, a glooming peace this morning with it brings, the sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Exit. End of Act 5. End of Romeo and Juliet.